We'll take a sealer. Now this has been pre-sanded and scrubbed uh, with our airbrush this morning. So our, um, our grain are em is empty and it's a very nice fresh piece of wood. It's ready for preparation and finish. Uh, so I will All go ahead and... Originally sanded it down to 320 already. So. Yep. So we'll use a little bit of that. And I'm going to saturate the, this pad. And it, it's no real different than rubbing the waxes or the finished oils uh, product lines that most are familiar with that do finishing uh, with the open grain look. The one thing that we want to pay attention to is that we have enough material that will actually uh, integrate into um, the deepest pores and let it saturate. So we're just depositing and spreading. And we've gotten some color of the wood coming yeah. up there, which is great. Um, that means we're pushing in. And I keep the light uh, above me so I can see yeah. where we're at. And I'm not pushing all that much, um, but I am gonna go ahead and let that settle. And we're gonna let that go for about three minutes okay. and really let it draw down into the wood. That'd be all right. Uh, and we're gonna. This is the this is the the saturation uh, load right now. We'll let this drop into this uh, purple heart. Okay. And as we're standing here talking, you can see we're starting to get some dull patches. Uh, the material is integrating in nicely. Yes. Uh, so we'll let that integrate in really deep um, until it stalls on us. Mm -hmm. And you can very easily see that within a minute or two, uh, where it's going to sit and hover on the harder harder spots versus the looser materials. And then, then we're going to do a, a burnish on that before we cure this. Okay. okay. Are we doing a sanding in between? Nope. Nope. No nope. sanding. No sanding in between. So that's going to be then a real quick and easy finish. Very quick, very easy, very doable. Um, you know, do-it-yourselfers. Okay. This is one of the easiest applications that you can come up with. Um, it can be done in-house. It takes very little footprint to do this. Like I said, you know, you have some wiping cloths, uh, an expensive stain pad, and some clean armor. And with this type of formulation, you can create um, a very nice open grain, hand rubbed look uh, that is very durable. And it already looks very good. Yeah. Now, as we sit here and talk, we can see how we've got the resins that I want to puddle on the hard line grains. And we're starting to see a lot of dull spots. So we are integrating and the material is saturating in just normal gravity, ambient room conditions. So we know that we're penetrating very nicely. I have to say, I never worked with Purple Heart before. And notice here, it's also <clears throat> very sensitive to light. So yes. it was partially covered with another board. We have here a darker line here. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. So and that actually raises for me another question. I'm not really sure. I mean, uh, cherry is very prone for to darken. To, yeah, to darken. And right. So on. And is this process of darkening the wood also um, done by UV light? It is. That's exactly how that's oh. that how that happens. In other words, uh, do I have a risk of, let's say, I have a bunch of cherry panels sitting there on my wall, right. waiting for the next project or whatever, partially overlapping each other, and now I'm finishing our products, turning on and off my UV lights all the time. If you have uh, wood species that are sensitive to darkening and aging through light exposure, which is a, a lot of woods are, especially yeah. furniture grade pieces, uh, they're prone to actually age. Some will silver, some will lighten. Other uh, hardwoods that have got certain tannin oils and acids will actually darken. By the UV light alone here. Yeah. Uh, uh, indirect sunlight uh, takes care of it. So that incorporates our UV frequency as well. Okay. So I'd be cautious about that. Uh, make sure that they're blanketed and covered. Right. At least when already prepared and so on, because it uh, still should right. sent out fairly easy if you're... Uh, not necessarily. It can, it can run pretty deep. Yeah. Yeah. Once it darkens. But eventually, like even in this piece, if it's going to be exposed to the light, it will all even out in the end, right? 
because the rest of the bark is just as well. At no, uh, the, the chemicals that are in the wood, uh, naturally, uh, they will go ahead and take their own color shifting. Uh, so it'll be splotchy, it won't be uniform. Okay. Yeah, we, I've never seen that in, in cherries or, uh, you know, the purple hearts and things like that that we know that are prone uh, to changing. Uh, you can get some very un uniform switches in color. All right, so we're we're looking pretty good here. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very happy with what we did. It took in what it's going to take in. So what I'll do now is I'll turn it to the dry side of this. It's not saturated throughout. And we're really going to just, as oh, we wow. were wiping up from the kitchen table for breakfast, getting all the jelly and the, the butter off the table. Wow. And we're actually maneuvering this material in if you really watch it close as I come back by with this dry side, mm -hmm. you'll see a type of flash at me, kind of like Windex. So the materials are solidly in there. This isn't being wiped back off. We're, we're taking excess off, but you can see it actually flash a little bit. So we're still having an abundance of sealer. I'm going to go to another dry side. We're going to get a little bit drier. I want it to look really, really flat and dull for us. Okay. I like that a lot. Yeah, I do too. We've got a we got a good load of sealant in there. We've got to push down all the excess out. Most of the of the grain lines, it's starting to uh, kind of migrate back up to where we are pushing this resin back down into the open grains and the grains are full. So it's actually floating back to the top. And you want to make sure it looks really, really dry. Uh, take off all you can. Pretty simple. And now what we'll do is, if you'll go ahead and cure that, turn the big light on. Okay, Stephen, I want to mention this. We, we have a saturated pad with a sealer in it. Yeah. So if you've got a project that you're working on, you don't need to burn through these. If you've got a saturated pad, the material cannot convert or dry or go bad. Yeah, for as long as it's not exposed to UV light. Correct. So what I'll do is I'll just put these in a sandwich Ziploc baggie yeah. and keep them in a cupboard or a cabinet, um, you know, that's dark. And they're always charged with a certain product line. And so yeah, just label the back then maybe yeah, with, uh, label it with a sealer or a tabletop. To, yeah. Right. And uh, if I'm not switching around the different machines and I've got a prevalent amount of work to do and nice pieces of furniture, I can go ahead and just keep using this yeah. uh, throughout the whole project. And if other applications, if you choose to brush on, you can do the same with your brushes. Correct. Right? Exactly. So you don't no need to clean them. Right. Throw them in a Ziploc bag, yeah. and label it what it is, yeah. and put it in a dark space. And they'll stay good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to take the tabletop finish. And I always just run with the grain. Yeah. Obviously. Look at that. Now I'm just doing lighter passes, not pushing as hard. But again, what we want is not to drag it back off too much, but we yeah. do want to leave it very, very thin. And we're going to let that settle in for just a minute here. Yeah. We can come around on the edge and... Just to let it uh, self-level out the... Yeah. 
Exactly, the edges. And so on. Right. Now, you can choose to leave this at any depth of charge you would like. Yeah. If, so if you wanted, you can go with another coat, like you say. Yeah, you could go with another coat. Um, but really, it's an open system. We're not on the clock. This is not going to air dry. Yeah. Uh, this stays completely wet and malleable and burnishable and, and um, um, uh, uncured until you actually activate the cure. We are in control of when this goes. Right. So literally, you have all the time in the world to adjust where this resin mm -hmm. and finish that you've placed. So as soon as you like what you see, and this could be a 12-foot long table, uh, and, and you go ahead and manipulate down and keep your eye on it. And when you see what you love, exactly the finish that you're looking for, mm -hmm. all across the board, that's when you go ahead and arrest the finish by turning and exposing it to UVA. Right. And it'll so dry immediately. Words, at this point, you still have the option just to say, I want it a little thicker, add a little more. Sure. Yeah. Or I want it a little bit drier. Wipe it yeah. off. But exactly. Wipe it off. So as we've been talking here, it's been leveling. And there's a couple of areas, a little bit high, because I can still see a little excess resin on there for what I'm looking for, for an open finish. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead now and come back. And I'm using the wet charged side. And then I'm going to turn this around. Not have straightened it back out. Still a little wet, but I'm going to take my dry side. Yeah. And look at that. All right, at this point, we're really happy with what we see. It's uniform. We've got open grain effect. Yeah. Uh, I think we ought to turn the lights on. Yeah. And, that, and they're normally curing with a, a higher build that you've been working with. Yeah. Just let the lights run another few minutes before you come over and check. And we keep talking, about, by the way, um, about all the lights, but we haven't really mentioned anything yet. That's what you told me before. Instead of using all these lights, for as long as it's kind of like manageable, your workspace, you just bring it out into the daylight. Correct. Uh, indirect sunlight and or direct sunlight, even on a cloudy day, creates enough UVA uh, in our atmosphere uh, and direct and, 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 and direct sunlight um, that will actually cure these materials readily. Now, you might be, be needing to leave them out there for another 70 seconds, 90 seconds. You know, you could actually get pretty exacting about when it actually cures, but yes, indirect sunlight, cloudy days, direct sunlight will readily cure this material. Okay. And, you know, so we leave the piece out for five minutes to eight minutes to 10 minutes, yeah. we know that they're cured. So, so especially I'm kind of thinking for those people on the budget that cannot really go with a, with a light, Correct. they're a couple hundred dollars or a few hundred dollars, yes. um, use the sunlight instead. Right. So. The one thing you don't want to do is apply it in the direct sunlight. Yeah, of course. Right, yeah. you'll start healing. Uh, but if you're in a protected area and, uh, you know, take it back outside and, and walk away from it for five to ten minutes, you'll be doing good. So here you the go. The problem is, of course, that also the hobby workers that only use uh, to work in the evening. <laughs> There's no more sunlight, right? Well, if they're in a workspace, a covered garage or yeah. workshop, uh, you'll be in good shape. But here you have it. Uh, you have a very honest uh, finish, open grain, very traditional looking. Um, Beautiful. And that was now whatever, like a total of like 10 minutes. Sure. And yeah. this is ready to install. Oh, it's ready. No drying time. Right. Exactly. No sanding in between. Here, let's do this. And it's, it's just, wow. Absolutely wow. We right. have a... Uh... Here's your alcohol. Okay. I don't want to drink it though. Because I don't drink. And then... Alcohol. Here's your acetone. Acetone. Here's Put our acetone uh, there. Here, here's our uh, nail polish remover. Okay. That has ruined more tabletops than anybody can imagine. Yeah, that's what it is. I 
we're not in a hurry. So that's been sitting there for a few seconds. Anything like that would actually rip into any wood finish that I've ever you done. Polyurethane? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Polyurethane will, will melt. Okay. So we come through here and... What about gasoline? Gasoline, too. What? No, no effect on it? None. That's It's chemical resistant. Uh, all the way through acids and everything else. But look at that. So it's like nice and clean, actually. So it's a cleaning agent, no. <laughs> you can use your acetone and your alcohol to clean clean your tabletops up with. <laughs> there you are. Gorgeous. Can you see that against the uh, light reflection? How beautiful yeah. this is. Wow. I'm impressed. You don't even need a spray gun. No, sir. Okay. Cool. All right.